hey there nice to have you back guys it's good to have, thanks for having me it's another episode i'm singing for the audience of, of the meaningful people podcast and this week we have a real treat for you we have a nice conversation with the one and only reb uri zohar born in 1935 kanina harabar shem 85 years old today yeah living i think in b'nai brak but started out in tel aviv one of the biggest actors comedians performers in israel like at the top at the top of his game over there in israel and he gave it all away to become a from jew yeah it's one of these stories that you hear and it kind of sounds like okay that's a nice story like that's in a like a fantasy book of like okay become jewish and from but it's it's wild he he's the top of the top of the Israel Hollywood. Okay, it's not America Hollywood, but he literally was... It's better. At, it's I better. think at some point he was living, I think someone told me that he was living in the biggest mansion in Israel at the point. Just to understand, like, he was a celebrity, well-known, well-liked, rich, famous, could really do whatever he wants, and now we interviewed him. And he's living in, in a one-bedroom apartment in Bnei Brak, and, and he looks like Rav Chaim Kanievsky. He does. Like not even mentioned that If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you're not, <laughs> then pull over and go on YouTube. But... He we're, we're, like we're gonna, he, talks, he takes us through his journey. Yeah. So and you're going to listen to that. Buckle up. Enjoy. And remember to leave a review after you listen to this episode. Enjoy. Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast, the podcast where we talk to people who are meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. We are joined today with Rabbi Uri Zohar, all the way from Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Uri, thank you so much for joining us, taking time thank out. Thank you me. very much. So we, we want to delve right into it. Uh, y- you're learning all day now, typically. And but you don't come How do from. You know? How do you know? Look at look, look at all the farm, all the farm <laughs> behind you. They look like oh, they're the used. Was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's what I heard. That's what I heard. But but okay, your background, listen. but your background, you 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 weren't um, learning all day. If anything, you weren't really religious back in the day. Is that correct? Not only learning all day. I didn't know anything about Judaism at all until the age of forty. You understand that Israel is different than America. America is a free country. You do your thing. You want to be a Buddhist. You want to be a, a, a Jew. You do whatever you want. Here we were educated against religion. We were educated against Judaism. The, 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 the whole, uh, the whole uh, point of view of, of the secular Zionism was that the, the, the religion, our, our Judaism, was, was, was our problem. Why? Because we were Jews and we were learning Torah and we didn't uh, develop as a normal nation. So we have to become normal. To become normal means stop learning, stop all this Hashem Yerachem. Yes, I want to say what they told us and begin to be normal. Work, go to the army, do this, do this, be normal. So until the age of 40, I didn't know anything at all about Judaism. It's unbelievable. Here in Eretz Israel, a Jew, Talking Russian Kodesh, Hebrew, don't know anything about Israel, about the Judaism. So, so there's there's a few things that we want to talk about from your, I guess, your past life. You you were in the army. You were, I think, a comedian. You were um, a, a, an actor. Uh, what was what was that like for you? Of course, this was my life. Not only that, I made films. I made television. This was my life. I did not. No. It's- Acknowledge, how do you say? I didn't acknowledge that using my talent is maybe 5% from, from, my, from my personality. I didn't know what love means. I didn't know what responsibility means, what faithful means. Nobody taught us. We were all, you know, in a revolution of Kibbutzim, we went to the kibbutzim, to the kibbutz. You know what the kibbutz is, yes? Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. kibbutz, you know. And, <laughs> that, uh, that much we know. You know, and we were working and doing this and doing that, revolutionary. And I was the leftist. I was the leftist. I was in a youth organization, which was called Hashomer Atzair, which was a leftist, almost communist youth organization. Went to the army. The so most of the country was the same. Went to the army, was and in and, and a military group, which means... Um, yeah, we, we played and and we did, and then television and film. This was 
my life. But I didn't know anything about really myself. I didn't know, I didn't have the means to recognize myself. The Torah is istakel boraise ubora alme, which means the Torah is the plan of the whole universe. And each soul of each Jew in the whole world for 3,400 years is in the Torah. It's written in the Torah. To find yourself through the Torah, this is the most important thing, except of learning Torah itself. But to know yourself, you don't have the means of examining yourself until you learn Torah. The Torah gives you the means to examine and understand yourself. And this I began 40 years ago. I, uh, the Kodesh Baruch who made the miracle, he sent me a rabbi of, of Zilberman, Zechet Tzadik, Goshe Boche, Shweitzre Zilberman. And he was from Germany, West Europe. And he astonished me because I, I never met, I never talked to a Haredi Jew for 40 years here in Eretz Israel. And this man began to talk to me about the European culture. And I was, I was astonished. I didn't believe that this person, you know, Schwarz, Schwarz, in Gans, you know, Mamish, uh, Haredi Jew, talks to me about Mozart and Beethoven and uh, philosophers and Plato and Aristotle. He knows the culture. So this was a, a, an unbelievable surprise because I said, so how, how, how do I get, because I was sure that all these Haredim are primitive people. Much primitive people, you know, they, they do the same thing. They dive in, they have these uh, things there. What are they doing? Suddenly I meet a person who knows the whole European culture, and he is a, 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 an observant Jew with every detail of the, he was, he was uh, something unbelievable, he was a true person. So then so, yeah. he asked me, he says, please, please do do I, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you go, you go, sorry, sorry. I, because I can begin your, that, no, so, he asked me, how do, never mind, never mind, ask. I want, <laughs> I want to get to the point. So I, I, are, I'm, I'm curious. From, from what I understand, you were the biggest star, the biggest celebrity in Israel at that point. And obviously you, you met him and it, it shifted your life, but it, it wasn't hard for you to give all of that up. You, you were literally- I didn't, the, be, I, didn't jump, I didn't jump into it. I went okay. slowly. I, mean, so I asked him, what is the minimum? He said to me, what do you mean the minimum? I said, I don't want to get in the first row in Gan Eden. I don't care to be in the last row, even to feel the heat on my back. I don't care. <laughs> Just to get the red line, to cross the red line. And he said, and he was so clever. He was so flexible. He said, okay, let me think about it. Call me in about 15 minutes, and I give you the minimum. And I called him about 15 minutes, and I said, and he said to me, this was after we met, Three, three or three or four times and understood that this is the truth. I will not give you now the whole the, the proofs that he gave me. But uh, you can get it today in every, uh, today it, it, it's, it's common. You can get the proof that the burning of the world, you cannot deny this fact. That the burning of the oil and he created the world. You know, just look at life. What do you mean? How is baby created? When he's been created the first minute, it's a cell from the father, from the mother, get together. It's, it's a millionth of a, of a gram. This is his weight. When he's born, he's three kilos weight, yes? Where did he get the weight? Where did he get the weight from? No? You didn't learn in university? In high school? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody asked this question. He got it from the food his mother eating. What is she eating? She eating kugel and falafel? And from this food, which goes into the stomach and disentangles, and the blood takes these cells, the molecules of, I don't know, I don't know how to call the, all these the materials that they yeah, pachmemot, all these things, and it goes around, it runs in the body, comes to the womb, and this cell, which is this fertilized cell, cell in the mother, identifies the cells in the food, and she builds from this food eyes, brain nose, nails, how many layers of skin. <laughs> I mean, you, you cannot deny it. 
So I was still astonished. I didn't know what to do with it. So that's why I asked him, what is the minimum? So I said, the minimum is Shabbos, Taras HaMishpoche, eat kosher, daven three times. What do you mean daven? I didn't know what davening means. <laughs> he said, minimum? I said, minimum. He said, with no korbones, no pseudonym, just krishme and davening. He said, how long does it take? He said, he th- thought about every answer. He was very serious. About eight minutes, he said, I said, this is it? This is it? He said, I'm not going to a synagogue. I'm going to daven at home. Daven at home. Daven at home. I said, what do you mean Shabbos? He said, wake in the morning, daven, go to sleep. I did it. We saw a bottle of whiskey. And daven, drank this whiskey and went to sleep. And before Shabbos, I woke up. I didn't know what to do. What do you do all Shabbos long? So this was the five things that he told me. Daven, broches, eat kosher, eat kosher, keep Shabbos, and daven, and this is it, you make broches. So I began, but then I revealed Torah. He sent me his son-in-law. His son-in-law was a young man in the time of a sage, and he began to learn with me Torah. And this was a revelation. I never saw such a wisdom in my life. I was in university. I learned literature and philosophy, and I was... Uh, a mediocre intellectual. I knew what I had to know. But to reveal this wisdom, this unbelievable wisdom, I don't forgive them for this thing. How did they deny from us for 40 years Torah? We didn't know anything about it. So this was the beginning. And when I began to learn Torah, I didn't finish working there. I still went to Tel Aviv and I still worked as a filmmaker and this and this and that. But more and more, more and more, I left this uh, thing that I did because it, it bored me. It simply bored me <laughs> in, in, in relation to the Torah. In, it, was, it, was, it was so boring because you, you, the, it's, it's worlds, worlds, Yam She'en Losof, it's a sea with no limit. You go into the Torah. And this man also began to teach me not only Pshat, but also Remez, and I'll go a little bit more deep to the Torah. This is it. So that's what I'm trying to do now for the last 40 years, 35 years. It took me a few years to go into it very slowly. And then we moved to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, and we have a big house there, very big house. We, we sold it, and we lived from this house a few years. And while we have also a villa, you cannot see the whole villa, but it's uh, <laughs> Baruch Hashem. Very and nice bookshelf, for sure. Yeah. Rabbi okay. Zohar, were you searching, though? You Again, like Yaakov said, you were the biggest celebrity in Not Israel. Were you searching for Yiddishkeit? Not at all. Not at all. I never felt that I'm missing something. I never felt I'm missing something. So it's Mama Shanae. I told you, I, I used... I'm sorry? So it, was, it was Mama Shanice. It was Mama Shmerkel. It happens to it happens to hundreds and thousands of people today in Eretz Yisrael. I'm a volunteer in Lev Lachim. Lev yeah. Lachim is, is all based on volunteers. Mm-hmm. Avrechim, people, sages, go out and, and, and reach out to these people. It's unbelievable what's happening in Eretz Yisrael. We're talking about hundreds and thousands of people. They come without yarmulkes. They come without yarmulkes. When they go into the base medrash, they put the yarmulke. And they begin to enter. And you see, especially this time now, in this corona thing, this plague, people are looking for something stable. They're looking for some, an anchor to hold to. Because everything is in, is, is in, in how do you say, uh, in, uh, everything is, is, is going down. Mm-hmm. Industrial systems, economic systems, financial systems. People don't know what to do with themselves. They need something to hold to. And this is what we are doing, except for learning. So this is why I'm also uh, very glad and very happy that you, you are interviewing me to tell the young people and young to, in America. To, to your credit. Don't, sorry? Yeah. No, no, you go. This one, you go. For young people, what? Don't, don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. Please, be, begin to go into the Torah again, not like in the yeshivas, I know. 
they may make mistakes, this and this, I know you have a lot of tiny second issues. No, do it by yourself, alone whenever you want. This is what kept Am Yisrael for 3,400 years. Friends, the only nation in the world, 3,400, there's no Christianity without Judaism, no Muslims without Judaism, we are the basics to hold the, the, internet, hold the, the worldly culture. We are the basis. Let's taste from it. I, I, this is what they did, and it gave me, it gave me life. It gave me happiness. I'm the most happy. You can write in your record book. You are talking now to the most happy, happiest person in the world. I, there no, no, no one was more happy than me. Maybe there's some who like me, but more than me, no, they are not. Uh, what what do you attribute person. that? Because the Tyra? That that's why. Why are you the yeah, happiest because, person in the world? Because you are. You know that you are. You are the quarter. You know American football. Nah, he knows more okay. football. You know? <laughs> not soccer. Yeah. Soccer, we play soccer. You play football, <laughs> America, right? Yeah. Quarter. The quarter is in the middle of the field. The quarter. He's running the whole show. The, the quarter. No. The, the quarterback. 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 You are there. You are in the middle of the show. In the middle of the show, all the other things are so stupid. What making money? <laughs> he has a million papers. He has a hundred million papers. How much paper do I need? I have some papers here. This one <laughs> <I need. laughs> How okay. many papers do you need? I was sorry, you what said are you doing there? You had mentioned fame. You know, fame, huh? <laughs> Tell me, who was the fourth president of the United States? The, huh? the fourth? Hello. You say the first, first or the president of the United States? First, George, George Washington. No, he said the fourth. The fourth. The fourth. The fourth. Oh, Nobody fourth? remembers. Hold on, wait. Nobody George remembers. Washington. Hey. John oh, Adams. Okay, the eleventh. Jefferson. Nobody I don't know. Nobody the... knows. <laughs> okay. What? You know? No, Nobody I don't know. I don't know the fourth. Do you know? Tell me. No, Maybe he this you'll know, but I'm not sure. Who is, Char <laughs> who is Charlie Chaplin? I, I've heard of Charlie. Charlie heard of him. Chaplin. He has a small mustache. I heard about him. What was he? Who was he? He was like a comedy <laughs> guy, but he's Wild not so popular these the days. What? He's not as popular these days as he was back in the day. This is what I tried to say to you, fame. There was no one person in the whole world who didn't know who Charlie Chaplin is. There right. wasn't one person in the whole world. Charlie Chaplin, the most, the most famous comic in the world. Nobody even remembers it. So what is money? What is fame? What is all these stupidities? You are with the Kodesh Bohu, and he is waiting for each one of us. Don't wear like a Haredi, and don't be uh, outside Haredi, but be with connection to the Kodesh Bohu. Talk to him. Talk to him every day. Not every day, a few times every day. Not in davening, not in Shmon Esri, in no, 10 times a day. Tell him what you really feel. Tell him very personally. The Kodesh Bohu is close to each one who calls him truthfully. What does it mean truthfully? Tell him you hate Sehore. Yes, I, what can I do? I don't want to, 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 to go into details, but everybody knows his own Yitzhore. If it's girls, if it's money, if it's fame, if it's uh, desperation, every, it's also the Yitzhak Talk to the Kodesh Baruch Hu. I do it every day, a few times every day. I did before this conversation. I talked to the Kodesh Baruch Hu. I said, please, I want to, I want to do the right thing. I want to, no, want to say things which are, which may, might be, 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 be a mistake. Put your words in my, in my mouth. Put your words in my mouth. Every day I do it. I'm, I'm not, uh, I was born 40 years ago. I'm a very young man. My body is 85, but I'm 40 years. Wow. So, you, you, you had mentioned that the only tiny you have is that, and you said we. When you said we, that we didn't know about the Torah, who, who are you referring to when you said we? The whole generation. The whole young generation. We didn't know anything. You're about saying the, the secular, the secular, the secular Jews. Secular, yeah, yeah. There was a very small percentage of Haredi Jews, which were a small, a small group in Bnei Brak and a small Jew in Jerusalem. This was what was left in the whole Judaism after the Second World War. Second World War, America. I don't know, eighty-eight percent uh, assimilation. Uh, maybe, I don't remember exactly how much. So, uh, so who, who was left? 
No, nobody. So all the second generation, we were we didn't know anything about it. Today we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, young and more old. They 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 yearn, they come. This is I tell you what's happening in Eretz Israel is unbelievable. I I very I, I hope very much that that you also listen to somebody who's experienced. I know what you are talking about, but I would wish to the Kodesh that you will know what I'm talking about. Look into the Torah. Have something stable and learning every day. And not learn what you don't, what you don't feel that you are close to. Learn whatever you want. You learn where your heart pulls you to learn. It can be Aloche, it can be Chumish, it can be Gmore, it can be Mishnais, it can be Midrosh, whatever. But don't leave the Torah. This is the life. Torah Chaim. As, as someone who is one of the, the biggest celebrities, I'm sure you had a lot of friends and, and a lot of colleagues and people you yeah. worked with. Um, do you still keep in touch with them? Do you know what they think of you at the time when you made this move and, and now? Of course, I'm in touch with all my, yes. my My best, best, best friend, he was uh, like, to, like me, very, very secular. He passed away seven years ago. His name was Arik Einstein, a very famous singer in Eretz Israel. And uh, my wife talked to his wife. And, and convince her, go to a seminar of Arachim. The seminars of, a seminar is like, they, 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 they show you the truth, they prove that the Torah was given by the Kodesh Bohu in Mount Sinai. They prove it. And she didn't want, she didn't want. And she went with the tall, small, little, little girls. And they made Shuve. And his two girls are married to our two sons. And we yeah. have mutual kid, uh, really? uh, grandchildren. And then, then wow. he passed away. It was, was, yeah, I, I talked to him today. I, I talked about him, not to, to, to him yet, uh. but I talked to him about him uh, on television because uh, we, we made a film about him and we write a safer tale to the to for his neshome, to, to, to have a schus to his neshome. Oh. So today, this morning, they interviewed me for on television. Okay, yes. So let me ask you uh, on a on a personal level, uh, maybe it was your family or um, when you made the switch or as you were making the switch, was that particularly difficult for you? Or yes, it was difficult. My wife in the beginning, first step, wanted to divorce me. She did not. Um, it was unbelievable. She didn't understand anything what happened to me, and she was over the secular, and uh, she was. Uh, Intellectual, young, young girl, young, young woman, and, and she didn't know what happened to me. We had then two books at home. One was Chumish, and the other was Rambam. One night, and we decided we we're going to divorce. We said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to this mikveh. What are you talking about? I'm not going to keep Shabbos, kosher. What are you talking about? You became a sugar. And then one night I came home, and we decided to go to divorce. And I came home. And she was sitting there with a Rambam, looking at the Rambam. And I looked at her, and she lifted up his eyes, her eyes, and she said, okay, I'll keep Taras HaMishpoche. I'll keep, uh, I said, I was afraid to ask why. <laughs> but then, after, after a month, I asked her, what, what, what did you see in the Rambam that made you, what convinced you to, 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 to keep this, these mitzvahs. She said to me, I looked, I, I moved page after page. I didn't understand one word, but I saw this is a serious thing. This is a tragic sentence. She never imagined that Rambam and Ramban and Rashi and the Teisves and the Tanoim Aroim is a serious thing. She never imagined she saw the words of the Rambam without understanding any one word, but she saw it's a serious thing, and she kept. And today, I wish I will, I will come to her 10 percent from her degree, Bor Hashem. Wow. She's, yeah. Bor Hashem. Do, do, you know, so when you were around uh, in your forties, is when you decided to, to not decide, but this change happened to you. At any point, yeah. I guess now, Baruch Hashem in your 80s, you're sitting at home with this beautiful swarm behind you. 
Do you ever have any regrets about those first 40 years? And you say, I had 40 oh, years yeah. that I just, I do you ever, you ever think about that? After, after 10 years, I tell you, after 10 years being here in Jerusalem, I asked myself the same question. Maybe I'm cheating myself. Maybe I'm cheating myself. Maybe I really want to go back, but I deny this thought, deny this thought. So I called a few friends and we made a meeting in Tel Aviv on the sea beach <laughs> in a place where we were meeting there and, uh, and having their fun. So I, and, and all the friends came. I came there and we, we hugged and kissed each other. And we were very friendly. We said, after, this is the truth, after 15 minutes, I said, Maud, I'm, what am I doing here? The same football, the same stupidities, the same gossip, the same things, no, ah, bah, jokes, this, that. I was bored. <laughs> I was bored. After 10 years of learning Torah, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't stand this, this boring meetings, still talking the same things. I touched myself. And after, I couldn't, I couldn't leave after 15, 15 minutes because they would insult them. But the first chance I had, we departed. They said, thank you very much. And I came back came to Jerusalem. And I knew that I don't regret even one minute. Nothing at all. As I said, I'm the happiest person in the world. <laughs> it's very special. We'll be right back to this important episode. But first, we have a few important messages for you. Story time, guys. I love stories. I got off the phone with a friend, and I was asking him for a reference for a doctor. And um, he mentioned this top-notch doctor, really you know, a great doctor. I asked him, that sounds great, and I appreciate it, but which, which insurance does he take? Mm -hmm. He says, I have no idea. I have no clue which insurance he takes because I, I don't even have insurance right now. And this is a responsible guy, a Whoa. responsible friend of mine. I said, okay, that's, what does that mean? How can you not have insurance? He told me that over the years, he's paid over $100,000 towards health insurance. And Baruch Hashem, because he and his family are healthy, they hadn't gotten any benefit out of it. Whoa. He felt like he'd been wasting money on his insurance premiums and deductibles. Instead, he switched to United Refua HealthShare, Ooh. which is saving him over $20,000 a year. I was like, Whoa. Sign me up. That is so cool. Wait, so what is a health share exactly? So what he told me was intriguing. Uh, health share is a group of people who share religious beliefs. Uh, for us, it's Jewish. Yaakov is it's Christianity. Um, Shalom. I'm sorry. Yeah, for what's us, that? us, it's Jewish beliefs. We, we share each other's medical expenses. I help you. You help me. It's as simple as that. It's Vihav Tolerech Kmocha at its best. That is so amazing. So how is he able to use the top doctor if he within that scenario so as uninsured patients they are free to choose any doctor or hospital and they're eligible for sizable discounts when they need medical care the top doctors in the country are available to them no in network restrictions amazing total flexibility that's so cool it actually makes a lot of sense yeah he's paying 4.99 a month for his whole family as opposed to what he was previously paying which was two thousand dollars a month which wow. is typical for insurance plans right the cost is based on membership size in addition to all these great benefits he says that the customer service is five star he never has to wait on hold he gets answers right away and his bills are processed faster than ever so that's why i'm urging you guys to go ahead and learn more about this at unitedrefua.org check it out at www.unitedrefua.org give him a call 1-855-SHARE-55 that's 1-855-SHARE-55 and learn more about it. It may be for you and your family. You know what else may be for you and your family? Mm. You know, Yaakov, uh, there's something, this virus has been going around, specifically in the Jewish community, I think, all over. Yeah. Um, R RSV. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a respiratory virus, it pr mainly, you know, found in, in kids and babies. Obviously, adults get it as well, but not as bad. And and it's 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 scary. You know, you got to monitor your kid, make sure they're breathing okay. It's a cough. It's it's sneezing. It's 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 It sticks around. It lingers a little while. There's, there's nothing more that you want to do if, if, let's say, you need to go to the hospital for a few nights with your with your baby to just keep it monitored. You don't want to be heading to a pharmacy after. You want the best pharmacy in the world, AMR, meeting you at your door with the medication you need. Yeah, I was kind of waiting to say something, but you're just going with it. I'm like, for the ad, you could say as much as you want. But that's 100% true. Like, it's a great point. Who wants to, you know, at when they're not feeling well... Um, you could probably hear my voice. When you're not feeling well, you don't want to go to one of these big pharmacies where there's other people that are contagious and have some other disease that you really don't want. You just want to be in bed. You want to be in bed and you want to be able to say, oh, someone's at the door. Oh, it's AMR to bring us our medication so we can feel better. So that's why AMR Pharmacy is the best pharmacy in the world if you're in New York, New Jersey. Even if you're not in New York, New Jersey, it's still the best, but 
that they you can, can use help. them. Yeah. But give them a call at 848-222-1110. Become part of the family. Say that or number one more time. 848-222-1110. Or yes. just head to their website if you're part of the millennial Gen Z era. Go to www.amrfarmrx.com. That's A-M-R farm not with an f that's p-h-a-r-m I, I, I was always thinking i'm never gonna check it out it's probably nothing but that domain amr farm farm with the f this guy there's, there's some some guy who has crops in the middle in the middle in the midwest the is best, like the best uh farm and i don't know i don't know i don't uh, know what the farm but also yeah <laughs> very good anyways uh guys united rafua amr pharmacy got your all your health needs covered make sure to check him out and enjoy, enjoy the, rest the rest of this episode. episode uh ravi zara let me ask you so Hashem puts everything that happens to us, Hashem does for a reason. Um, is there maybe a lesson that you personally learned from your first 40 years? I mean, obviously now, Baruch Hashem, you're, you're in the best place possible, both both physically and, and, and mentally. But, but 40 years, you, you, you were in the army, you were a comedian, you were a director, a, a Holly, uh, well, Hollywood, but Israeli star. <laughs> it, what, what's a lesson that you, that you look from your experience and say, okay, I got at least that from, from my experience. I tell you, uh, I, I, I learned this thing of, of Hazar uh, that says, you learn, you learn from, I tell you what I learned. How much did I, how much did I want to put into, to invest in my Yesahor? In my own fame, in my own, own great, my own greatness, I am I am better than everybody else. I am I, 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 uh, I How much did I put in it? How much did I invest in it? You learn from Yitzchak how much you can invest in kedusha, in holiness. This you learn from Yitzchak. This I learned from my first forty years. I worked. Like I'm a sugar, I work day and night, films, films, television shows, this, that, creating thing. My mind was creating, oh no, new and new things, new things. Am I in still degree in investing in Torah? Am I in the, in the same degree in investing in pray, prayer, in talking to Kodesh Bochum? I'm still far away from there. This is what I learned from my secular life. You are putting a lot, you are a slave to your own passions and to be a real slave. It took all your energy, all your energy, everything in you for the real tashis, for the purposefulness, the purposefulness of the world. What am we arguing? Is there a purpose to this life? This is the main question. Is there a, is there a purpose to this life? Or we live? 120 years, we go away, this is it. We were, we are nothing. We can we go back to nothingness. Cannot be, cannot be. The wisdom that is the Kodesh Boko invested in this universe is so unbelievable. Ask the scientists, they tell you, physics, chemistry, biology, they, they reveal more and more things, and the more they reveal, they understand more and more the wisdom, the unbelievable wisdom, that they grasp a small part of it that this world was, was created in this wisdom, cannot be just for, we lived, we ate a few kugels, and we go, and we go to the game, cannot be, cannot be. So this is the purpose of this. And this, I tell you, if you invest in this, you are being born in you. If you do this, you're being born in you. You don't get more information. You don't get more knowledge. You are being born anew every day. Every day. This is life. This is what life is for. This is it. Chaverim, friends, we are not, and, and by the way, it's not a racial thing because we are Jews. Every person in the whole world become a Jew. Nobody can deny it from him. Not Moshe Rabbein is all, all, all bathing. He cannot deny from him. He takes three Jews and he goes to the mikveh and he's circumcising himself. Says Malti, Betavalti, the Shem Yadut. He is a, a full Jew. So it's not a racial thing that we more than there. Everybody can do. Oculus was a, was a Ger Tzedek. Shmaya Bavtalion, Ger Tzedek. 
the greatest, greatest people in the world. Gayret said it. So everybody can become, and especially we, that we are already Jews. So maybe there is also an obligation that we are more obligated than, than a Geir Tzedek because we have to know it. But I think we know it more and more. I don't know exactly what's happening in America, but in Israel, it's unbelievable. Thousands and thousands come. They are not looking like, like religious Jews. As I said, we come with our my yarmulkes, but they keep Shabbos. They begin with the small, the, the minimum, keep Shabbos, Taras HaMishpoche, they bench, they make a Kiddush, they light candles, they keep Yom Kippur, they grow Rosh Hashanah. This is what's happening in Earth Israel. Rabbi Zohar, if, if your life was turned into a movie, what would you think the title should be? Oh, good question. <laughs> this is a very difficult question. I thought it this world. The title? But you, got, you have the mind of a director. I'm sure you can come up with a good title. Uh, I wrote a few books. I want, want to, to name one of my books from, from Israeli to a Jew. You know, <laughs> from Israeli to a Jew. And... Um, and uh, I, 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 title. I don't know. If you make a film, ask me then. Maybe then. I'll <laughs> <have to. laughs> uh, Rabbi Zohar, so we like to, Nachi and I like to ask our guests a few uh, different type of questions, and we're going to start to ask them. There's 613 mitzvahs, so many ways to connect to Hashem. Is there one particular mitzvah that you connect to Hashem more so than the others? I have a feeling I might know the answer, but... This was a gear. They came to Rabbi Akiva and, and uh, Hillel, as he teaches the whole Torah on one step. Mm. The real purpose of the whole world is love. It's become one. Love. We say twice every day, Echad. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Akiva, Hashem, Echod. And this Echod, we saw that Hashem Akiva, Hashem, Tahor, Kadosh, pure, Kodosh, wise, we don't say Echod. So it's, uh, is it a mathematical concept? As long as they call it. it means that we have a, a unified one source for the whole universe. And two, I don't know what to say to you one mitzvah, I don't know what to say one mitzvah. But I can give you an advice. I'll give you an advice. Maybe I've also finished because of a very long interview. So people become fatigued. They don't. Uh, no, they want. They want to hear more. Not used to. Um, there's a pasuk in Mishri. It's Perik Yud I don't take the book out because I know it by heart. But I, I, I said it many times. Mishri Perik Yud Zayin pasuk of Gim Yud Zayin means seventeen chapter pasuk Esrim Mishal twenty three. And the pasuk says this. I say word by word. Shloim Amelech. The wisest person in the whole world, Shloim Amelech, says, Shochad mechek rasha ikah lehatot orchot mishpat. A free translation into English. Bribe is being taken from the lap of a wicked person to change the verdict, his verdict. Bribe is being taken from the lap. Lap is where the mother holds the baby, yeah? It's called the lap, L-A-P, lap. Bribe is being taken from the lap of a wicked person, Roshe, to change the verdict, his verdict. So everybody, most of them, before the Rishonim say, it's a very simple, the, the, a wicked person gives money or something, bribe to the judge, and the judge changes the verdict from, from bad to good. Rashi says, the Kodesh Bohu is accepting words of surrender and appeasement from the lap of the most wicked person in the world, Michek Reshaim, the wicked person. Kelomar, when it says Hashem Kelomar, it's something difficult because bribe you take from a hand, you take from the mouth, but bribe from a lap, what do you mean from a lap? Says Rashi, from the most inner part in your soul, where the mother holds her baby, from the inner, most inner part in your soul, if you talk to the Kodesh Bochu 
from this point, this wicked person who robbed now, five, yeah, five hours ago, an old man, he robbed him from, from, his, from his small his money to go to a pub and he been with drinks and become drunk and he goes and he wakes up with a hangover and then he looks at himself and he begins to talk to Kosibohu, Abba, Father, yes, I did it again. I did it again. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I want to be, but I, you will see. I know, I know. I promised a thousand times. I cannot, I don't, st what can I do? Please, please, Father, help me. The Kodesh Bohu accepts this prayer, which comes from the inner part in the soul of every Jew, every Jewish person in the world. And he, and he changes his verdict from bad to good. It's unbelievable. This is an Eitzah. I can tell you, I use it every day. Yetzirah works for the 120 years every minute. Here, because you become desperate, it's a Yetzirah. Here, you're fatigued. Here, you don't want to learn Torah. You want this, you want that. You know what you do? You drink, you do this, you smoke, whatever. And you know you're Yetzirah. If you talk to the boy or to the Kodesh Bochum, from the inner part in your soul, Mechaik, and talk to him truthfully and ask for help. No power in the world will deny, but then you have to have to be to be sensitive to the response from the Kodesh Bochum. Some response comes from your brain, sometimes comes from your heart, sometimes it comes from an incident that happened to you. You have to be, you have to be to be aware, to hear this question. And then you are you are you are you are the you are the quarterback. You are in the middle of the game. If you could this sit down with give you. if if you could sit down with anyone in history who's no longer alive and speak to them for for an hour, who you would it be? Sit down with who? Anyone in history who's no oh, longer you alive. Sit down. Hmm. Wait, did you say what you I said again? You, yeah, I, I tell you right away. Who would you sit if down I with? Could sit someone that is not alive. Sorry. Who, yeah. Who would you if say? I could sit to someone who's not alive. I didn't say it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. First, so from from my feelings, I would like to to sit with Ari Einstein, who is my my best friend. He was for for forty years my best friend. Yeah. I, I, and I, but if I have to choose, maybe. But I'm talking about who, 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 who can I imagine such a thing? But to even to see the Gro, a go in Vilna, you know, the mm. Gro in Vilna. Yes, this he, he was my teacher of Zilberman from Zilberman. He the Gro was his his light. He 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 he, he, he lived this way. This man had eighteen children. 18 children, one, one wife for one wife. Wow, his daughter Rachel Weiss went from Tiberia to Jerusalem and they went through Jericho and she went there with her husband and three children. And they threw a Molotov bottle to the, to the bus. And the whole bus began to run, everybody ran out, and she saw her children not with her. She went into this burning bus to save her three children, and she she was burned alive with her three children. Wow. This was the daughter of my teacher. And whoever heard the Hesped, the, I don't know how to say Hesped in English, the, the eulogy. morning talk, what you say, after the, of my teacher, said, Hashem Natan ba Hashem Lakach, Hashem Hashem Mevorach, knew he understood what it means to being a Jew. What does it mean to be a Jew? Friends, I want to sum up, because we can talk and talk and talk. <laughs> I'm going to sum and tell you, this is, a, this is a great, the greatest thing that can happen to a person in this world is to be connected to Kodesh Baruch Being Jewish means it obligates us. Because our fathers gave out their lives. They were sacrificed. They went to be burned alive and not to leave Hashem Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Shema Yisrael. Our friend, father, and grandma, they, and they made us one people, and they made us Jews. 
which is the greatest president in the world. And again, it's not racial because everybody can become a Jew. They don't want, but we are. Let's exploit it. Let's exploit it. Let's find out what it means. What it means to be sons of the Kodesh Bochum. But oh, Rizor, I, I just want to ask you one more question. And then I have one more question. So just, one more and then one more. Please neither. Please neither. Please neither. Please neither. Just, just for, for, for someone, you know, who didn't live the life that you lived, meaning you, Bar Hashem, you chose Yiddishkeit. You, you lived a life and then you, you grabbed it. You chose it. What advice would you give to someone to live, to be the happiest person in the world? Who, let's say, was from, from birth? I said right now, talk personally to the Kodesh Baruch about everything the Ramchal Lutzato says. The Kodesh Baruch hears you like the best friend. He bends his ear to hear you. You talk personally to the Kodesh Baruch Personally, you are, you are his own, only son because your DNA and your DNA and my DNA are different. We cannot... We cannot accept any member for any. We shouldn't have this need, Hashem. But you cannot attach a member from another person to your body. The, you are unique, from the most bottom, the most personal, inner, central point in your soul to the Kodesh Baruch. It's the best advice I can tell you, and this will lead you, because all all you people also, they listen to you. They, 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 you are, you are, you are religious. I know young people in America. I met them. So, but still, you are there. You, 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 you are, you, you are keeping Shabbos. You are putting film. You are there. Okay, we know. We all have fatigue. We do it this and this way. So we want something. We want to to be attached to the real purpose of life, to be happy, to be strong, to be independent from all this passions of this unbelievable stupid world which the Kodesh Bochum shows us now how stupid it is how everything entangles everything goes dis- disentangles everything go, 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 goes apart everything goes apart only for this reason we are very close I'm sure about it Chaim Kanevsky says it all the time for the last two three years we are very close to Gule let's exploit this last few days or minutes or, or weeks and to do the thing, and I tell you, this is what life is all about. You'll be the happiest person in the world. I love that. Uh, Rabbi Zohar, the last thing I want to uh, talk to you about is you take your time very seriously. So again, thank you so much for taking your time to spend it with us. Uh, but the, the conditions that you said that you would do this uh, talk with us is if we bring up Lev Lachem, and I know you mentioned it before, but but why is Lev Lachem to you so particularly close to your heart about what they do? I tell you why, because who, who, who did Lev Lachem, who made Lev Lachem as the G'doyim of Israel. Nobody, it's not somebody came and with an idea. Arab Shach, the he called Arab Sorotskin, and he said to him, we have to do this thing. We have to go to Avrechim. It's an historical event. No time in the whole history of Jewish people, I know because I checked, the godly soil, the leader of Israel, Rav Shach, then, came and said to Avrechim, people who learn Torah, only Torah, this is what they did. You go out from your homes, from your koilers, from yeshivas, and you knock on doors of secular people and you come in and you say, I came to learn a little bit Torah. This made a revolution. So this is why I say I'm so particular about Leib Lachim. Because uh, he called me also. I was then sitting already 10 years in the whole city and not moving out. I even sat a whole week in the whole city, coming back back home only, only on Shabbos. And I learned Torah the whole day long. And then they came to me. I have, I have uh, Chaim uh, and Abraham Zewald, and they said, we have, we have to do, you have to do this thing. And they didn't say, I'm not going, I'm not doing anything, I'm not going back there. You forget about it. They took me to Arab Shach. And he said, you have to do it. I said, I learned Torah. He said, learn on the way. Sit in the cab and learn on the way. And this, he said, this is it, you have to do it. And I, from then on, I, I remember the first meeting they made in a place called Chulon. It's near Tel Aviv. There was such a traffic 
or to Chorah, it was just, there was a basketball thing there, a basketball yard. Now, I was there, sure there's a game. And we came, the thousands of people came to hear me. After 10 years, I was disconnected. I didn't make any television, anything at all. I was sitting in Lerner Torah. They came to hear me. And then I knew that I'm see, seeing something which is historical. I didn't believe my eyes that thousands of people will come and hear somebody who talks to them about Judaism. No jokes and no shows and no anything. Judaism. And this was the beginning. And it's now an obligation. I, you, you cannot, you, you cannot, you're not allowed to, to leave it. The Torah commands you to do this. If these people want, they need this help, it's the same as the Kodesh Boch sent me. Show me that Israel We have to go there and help them. That's really beautiful. Gives them uh, the hand to help them. Rabbi Zohar, thank you for showing us Sorry. what a, a true star really looks like to Hashem. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, this is a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for listening to that episode. And I, I, I have to say something I'm very impressed with. I think this has been the one condition that Reb Uri Zohar made to me. He said, I'm only doing it if you could plug Leib Laachem, leivlaachem.org. Um, they need our help. And there's so many people in Kali Shul need our help. His time, literally, he he's he's he is like Rav Chaim that he's just learning all day. And, yeah, and um, he didn't know when we did this interview. He, we were hooking up the the the, the hookup over there with people in Israel. Hooking and up the hookup, I know. Hooking <laughs> up the hookup, whatever. And he didn't Video know he didn't know a phone or, or even like he knew because at his at his level that he was with the Israeli Hollywood film and right. things but like that. But that was like 60 that was a long time plus ago. years ago. That was a very long time ago. And uh, so, yeah. So if you're listening to this, this is not even a paid ad, but this is Reb Uri Zohar's request. Please go to leivlaachim.org. They are doing everything for Klal Yisrael. He you don't is, remember like walking around with the Leiv Lachem Pushka as a kid? Yeah, of course. Door of course, to door. of course. And uh, so now the push goes online. Yeah, the push goes in your pocket. <laughs> so uh, please give generously to Leib Lachem and uh, help them help you. Ciao.